Hi guys, Alex Forte here, The Art of Simple Golf. So I'm answering a question that I get a lot, but very recently from uh, one of our members, which was about how to flight the wedges. Now the thing is, the wedge game is too often overlooked, but it's also, I think, too overcomplicated too frequently. So what I'm gonna do today is, I'm gonna give you some pointers, some simple tips to gain a bit of control, whether, you know, whatever clubs you have. Let's really simplify this to give you the right flight and control that might not make you into Mickelson overnight, but is gonna give you the consistency that you want. All right, so we're gonna go through point by point, but let's get into it. Okay, so let's kind of focus on the main, the first sort of point, which is the length of swing, right? Let's just say you've got three wedges. I've got 58, 54, and a, a, a mid wedge here, right? If I give myself three swings, and what I mean by that is three lengths of swing, here, here, and here, whether you want to use a clock face or whatever, but give yourself three lengths of swing with every wedge shot you hit. It really simplifies it. It simplifies the technique. It does everything. That is just your first swing here to here. That's gonna give you a certain distance. The second length of swing is here to here. That's what feels good to me. My third length of swing is with the, the right shoulder, sort of the club at least getting to shoulder height. That's my third swing. That's gonna give me a distance with my 58. The same swings are gonna give me different distances with each wedge. Now, you might not know those to precision. You might not get it right every single time, but it's gonna give you a good sort of baseline and consistent foundation to lead from, all right? That's as far as sort of distance control, okay? <clears throat> we will go into that more in another lesson, but the, we've got two more sort of elements to think about here. One, if we want it to fly a bit higher, and we want one to cover it a bit lower. Either can work, but more often than not, people kind of take the highest wedge that they've got and almost kind of do like a full length swing and swing up and try and sort of flight it all the way to the top. Try, kind of almost treating it like a, a full golf swing. That is kind of hard to do. So really, more often than not, the general rule of thumb is let's make the swing shorter more controlled, easier. So even for this same length of shot, I could quite easily take my mid wedge and just do my first level of golf swing. Now the first level of golf swing, just to make sure that we're not just using hands, okay? We're not just flipping the hands through. We are certainly making sure that everything is working in unison, that we're using the hips thoroughly through the ball, kind of sticking that finish. That's what's gonna give us that control. So the second kind of point is, just club up, make this a lot easier for yourself. And if it's going a bit shorter, okay? And that was almost like an extended pitch shot, but the result was considerably better. And I didn't even practice it, like it was just a first instinct while I'm waffling on here talking to you, and it kind of worked out because there wasn't much that could go wrong. See what I mean? So we don't always have to fly it high. We can control the flight now. So just to recap, choose your length of swing or like just practice them a little bit. Practice them a little bit, the three lengths of swing that you're comfortable with. Try them out with different clubs. Now, when you're out on the course, refer to one of those that you think is the nearest match that you're most comfortable with. It might be the most lofted one with the fullest swing. I doubt it, but it might be. So the next element is, what do we do to alter the flow? I'm gonna choose the 54. Now, too many people would put the ball way, way too far back, and kind of stab into the ground if we're trying to hit it a little bit lower. It doesn't really have to work like that because we still just want the club to be bouncing off the turf. We don't wanna be taking big pelts of divot digging all the way down. So as the general rule, 
I want you to have the ball over the sternum, no matter where, what kind of height of shot you're gonna do. We want a consistent foundation. You don't wanna be remembering all these tweaks and adjustments. That's fine for the people, you know, scratch golfers, people on tour who are practicing all the time. We want a solid, consistent foundation. And that's when golf gets really fun, okay? Because then you can start tweaking and manipulating a little bit, all right? So, as you set up to the ball, try and get your feet about width, you know, slightly narrower than shoulder width, I would say. Definitely more weight over on the lead side, as with most iron shots. Then we want the sternum just over the ball, all right? Now, let's say we want to hit a low one. What we're going to do, and it might take a bit of practice for you to get this, nothing changes on the backswing, nothing changes on the, the, the setup, nothing like that. I'm actually going to give you a little bonus tip at the end that is going to work for probably about 60, I would say 70% of you and transform my wedge game, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's say I want to hit this a little bit lower. All I'm going to think about is this club head at the end. Where is that going to be pointing? So I'm going to try and feel like I'm allowing the hands just to turn over a little bit more so this the club face is almost pointing down a little bit, okay? That's going to give me a slightly lower ball flight and just almost give it a slight little hook spin. It won't really, but that's the kind of feel and idea. So I'm going to go for the second level, second sort of range backswing, second range through swing, but I'm just going to try and allow the hands to roll through just a little bit more. And that might give me, if I do it correctly, a lower ball flight, which will have spin. But, you know, this is actually something Tyke Woods does. He actually tries to kind of hit a lot of his pitch shots with a little bit of spin, whether it's chip shots or anything. Because too many times people kind of cut across it and get that glancing blow that's out the toe and kind of spins off and balloons up into the sky. So we're going to try and add that little bit of wrist roll here. But we do not want to be flipping, okay? That's what we don't want. The feel that we're going to have is that the butt of the club is still ahead of the club head. Now, I wish I had two cameras, but I'm lazy, so. But we're going to try and have this feel here, okay? But we're going to allow the, the wrist to roll. So it's there. The hands are ahead of the shaft, but the wrist is rolling to give it a slightly close face. So let's try, let's try and execute this into action. Always choose my intermediate point. Okay, I'm gonna make a little backswing now. I'm just gonna allow those hands to roll. And that got a nice flow. And that's gone to about, I don't know, maybe four feet. But hopefully you can see my club head are sort of finished around there. And for a, a you know, high lofty club, that flew low with spin. Okay, so, I'm going to show you what it's like to do the second one, which is flighting it a bit higher. Now, there's a couple of elements to this because I want us to really feel like we're holding on to it. I don't want you to be flipping up trying to get that height. That's very important. So we make sure that we've got the sternum over the ball. Okay. We make sure that we have um, the precision and consistency of that just to make sure it's here. Then we know before we're trying to execute the shot, what length of swing, whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's three, whatever it is for you, okay? That's what we're dialing in. Remember the one carries on to there, the two carries on to there, and the three carries on to there. It's the same sort of sensation, but we're just increasing the distance and the range. So to get that little bit of extra height, all we want to try and do is enable the club head to stay a little bit more open. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. Everything else is the same, but like we were trying to turn it over where the club face is a little bit more shut as we come through, we're not flipping it and we're not flipping it up this way, okay? We are just allowing the club face to not pass the hands, which is meaning that, and we're keeping it pointing to the sky. That is essentially all we are trying to do. From here to here. 
pointing up to the sky, the same strike, the same sensation, the same distance control, we're just altering the height. That literally is it. So I'm going to show us here where we're keeping it up to the sky, all right? Everything's the same. See that? It's going to give you that extra little bit of flight. Now there, I did come across it a little bit, full disclosure. So I'm actually just going to try and wait a little bit more, but keep everything working together. All right. And I'm actually going to apply the secret tip that I'm going to explain in a second. I'm actually going to apply that myself before I tell you exactly what it is. See if you can notice it. Right, that worked just fine. So, the secret tip is not actually that secret, but um, uh, old sort of European tour player gave me this, a challenge tour player gave me this tip many moons ago when I was just trying to become a good golfer. And it was about the wedges and the grip with the wedges. All you need to do to kind of enhance a bit of Bryson DeChambeau, not the distance wise, but a bit more control is grip the club more in the palm of the hands, all right? So basically, we're just trying to shift it more in the palm of the hands. What's that gonna do? What that is gonna do is enable you to have a little less wrist action and enable you to hold it off just a little bit more. So we are now gonna be swinging more with our bodies rather than anything else. We're going to, so it's not so much wrist, we're not trying to flip. It's a bit harder to create wrist hinge. It's just encouraging more passiveness. So grip more in the palm of the hands and you'll notice it might be a bit easier to keep the face open. And it does actually work with the lower flight as well. But what it will encourage you to use your body a little bit more, a bit more that way, okay? A little bit less wristy, a little bit more larger muscle dominant. So try that and see if it gives you the extra control that you're looking for. All right, so there you have it. The kind of tweaks and tips to flight the ball and a bit of distance control as well. And that grip adjustment that really might help, you know, 60, 70% of you. So if you liked it, um, please put it into action and let me know below. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, there's a really cool link below as well for a fantastic series to help you with every facet of your game. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time, my friends.